Hi guys. As part of today's lab, we will understand the seven segment display interface with the PSOC board. So as part of today's lecture, we will understand the basic seven segment display and its interface with the PSOC device. As part of PSOC creator, we will look at the use of a control register and we will also understand the use of buses in the PSOC creator schematic. So before I start with the PSOC creator, let's look at the basic schematic interface. So if this is my PSOC board with the PSOC device with the IOs, we will use the connections as follows. This is a common anode seven segment display. So we will connect this through a resistor to the VDD port of your board. Now A is connected to P0 0, 0, B is connected to P0 1, similarly C is connected to P0 2, D is connected to P0 3, E is connected to P0 4, F is connected to P0 5, G is connected to P06. All of them are on the board. Now the display point we don't plan to use this. So where are all these connections on the board? So let's look at the board here. Now this is the board that you will be using. Now if we flip the board over here and you can find these you can find the the ports here and of these ports we will be using p00 p01 they are distributed all over the board so you can identify all the ports so here back on the schematic we will be identifying p02 3 4 5 6 and then you will connect it to the ports of your seven segment display. I hope this is clear. So let's go ahead and start the project. So let's go ahead and start a new project. And this will be an MTP SOC 4 design. Let's go ahead and name this as lab 4 underscore SSD. So SSD stands for seven segment display. Now again, in my workspace, there are multiple projects. So make sure that you right click on this and you set as active project. Now, as part of the schematic, what we are going to do is, as I explained here, if this is my seven segment display, then in my PSOC I will connect a register a 7-bit register so that the microcontroller will write into the register and then I'll take the 7 outputs combine them into a bus of 7 bits and then map this pin to the different ports of your device. Now here this would be P00, P01 and so on. This I will specify in my CYDWR. So Let's go ahead and find the control register here. So we would go to digital, we would go to registers and we would take control register. Let's go ahead and name this as LED REG, which is LED register. Now, since it's going to be a seven bit register, so the number of outputs will be seven. Apply. Okay. So again, 
the control register to understand the APIs, you can go ahead and read the data sheet. As I said, we need to understand how to connect this as a bus. So let's go ahead and wire this up. So before I start with the connections, look at the APIs here. So we will be using the API, the right API. So we have to give it a uint8 value. So our API will be LED REG underscore right. That's basic API that we need to use. That's it. So let's start wiring this up. and then we will short these connections like this. So all these seven outputs are now commonly connected here and then we take a wire out here. Well you can do it from here, here or here, it doesn't really matter but we need to configure this as a bus so let's go ahead and you can give it an output, let's say let's give it a name as LED REG out it really doesn't matter you can decide what name you would like to give but more importantly you have to select this as a bus with a left index of 0 and a right index of 7 I'm sorry 6 so it's 0 up through 6 which is 7 bits go ahead and click on OK so now this becomes a bus 0 down to 6 and now you have to individually configure each of these outputs to select which index of this total bus will this individual output be? So since this is the zeroth output, we will configure this as zero. So this will be a single bit instead of a bus and the index will be zero. Then we start with this one, we do the same thing. Only thing here, it's a single bit, the index will be one. and then we continue doing this for all the seven individual bits again you could use this individually as well you can make seven different outputs as part of this lab I just wanted you guys to know how to use the buses I missed that one. That one is going to be four, not five. This will be five, and this would be six. So now we've individually mapped this. You just want to confirm here that there are no errors. So now that said now we have to map this out to a pin so let's go ahead and get a digital output pin let's configure this and call this SSD out now since there are seven pins here so this will be seven and you can say it displays as a bus. Now let's say if I don't display this as a bus, what is it going to look like? You actually get eight or uh, seven individual pins like this. Now we don't want it to be like this, so let's go ahead and display this as a bus. So now this becomes a bus and we go ahead and attach it. Now there's another option here you need to look at which is if you select this as contiguous then it forces placement on adjacent physical pins. Now in our case we need to look at if these are adjacent physical pins so how do we know that 
let's go ahead and look at it here. Now since we plan to use the P0 through to P6, these are all adjacent pins, so we can actually use that. Well, that's it. We need to map this, so let's say SSD out is mapped to P0, 6 down to 0. So using a bus actually makes life easier for us because now you don't have to declare eight individual pins and you can directly map this to your output. So now since the configuration is complete, so now let's go ahead and look at the main.c code. Now I've already written this code up so I'm going to explain this to you guys. Now we're going to use a uint 8i the variable which we'll be using to write into the control register. We make a function called as count and the input is an integer file which we are passing which will be a variable of type uint8 and in our main function we create a for loop. This is the infinite loop in which I'm creating a for loop which counts from 0 to 9 and depending on the value of i it actually passes the value of i to this function count. Now this function count is a switch case depending on the value that you give here that particular case gets selected and as part of that case I'm using the API underscore right to give the value to the control register. Now these are the values for displaying. Let's take an example. Since my lowest bit is A, now A has been mapped to P00. This is 01, 02, 03. 04, 05, 06. This is just for your information. Now if I want to display let's say the number 2 which looks like this. So this is A, this is B, this is C, D, E, F and G. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G of which C and F, C and F are off. So since this is a common anode, since this is common anode, then A since it's on has to be 0, B since it's off has to be, I'm sorry, B since it's on again has to be 0, C since it's off will be 1, D is on so it's 0, E is on hence it's 0, F is off hence it's 1, G is on hence it's 0. So if I see this in hexadecimal, if I place a 0 here, this will be 2 and this will be 4 since we use the 8, 4, 2, 1 system. So this would be 2 and 4. So similarly in the code for the value 2 we write 0x24 and then you can figure out the different values for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So we've just made a counter that the count value is displayed then there is a delay for one second and then we see the output on the seven segment display. Alright, so it's a fairly straightforward code. Go ahead and type it for your practice. Let's go ahead and clean and build this lab. Alright, so once the build has succeeded, now we will go ahead and program the board. Let us go ahead and look at the board here. Now this is your seven segment display. This is A, B, C, D, E, F and G. This is the display point. 
so this connection here this one will be right here this the second one from my right will be your a this is B so we know that a has been connected to P 0 0 so th that is this wire here and that this connection comes out to be here this one is P 0 0 now how do I know that this is printed at the back of this board so now you can identify each of these connections this is A this is B B is connected to P01 as per our connection rules then we have C that is connected to P02 C is right here this connection this is C is connected to P02 so that is this connection so you can figure these connections out now once you've connected up the board please don't forget to take one of the common anodes which is here or here this one I have left it open but you can use the one here make sure that you can you've connected it here then I have put in a resistor and the other end of the resistor I have connected it to VDD this is the VDD port so make sure that you have connected it to VDD right here otherwise this will not work so that said let's look at the code here we have built it already now we will go ahead and program the board so let us go to debug and then we will hit program now let us look at the board here once it gets programmed let's see the output of the board now if you look at the output here it's actually a very bizarre output I have purposely made a mistake in our design now let's go ahead and find that mistake so our main.c code looks to be fine everything logically makes sense our CYDWR mapping is also okay our schematic also looks fine now the mistake that I have made is that here the left index is 0 and the right index is 6 so actually 0 is actually mapped to 6 and 6 is mapped to 0 that's not the case please understand that now let's rectify this and make this 6 as the left index and 0 as the right index when I was explaining the design I knew I was making this mistake so please go ahead and correct this but I wanted to explain how logically if your output does not make sense the different places that you can check or you can debug one of the places is here is your mapping another place to check is your pin assignment and the third place that you would want to check are the values that you are writing here so that said let's go ahead and clean and build this project again so we've rebuilt the project now let's go ahead and program the board now as you see here the output is now absolutely correct so again if your output on the seven segment display is not turning out to be as it is you might also want to look at your physical connections that you made here and well this LED is glowing because of the internal wiring but this is the output as expected we have the counter now let's go ahead and check if what we are doing is correct instead of having a one second delay let's make a half a second delay that is 500 milliseconds let's go ahead and program this again and let's see the output so you see that the counter speed just increased 
So as part of this lab, we saw the interfacing of your PSOC board with the seven segment display. And on the PSOC creator here, we understood the use of a control register of how we can make a bus, how we can use the outputs as a bus and in contiguous mode. So I hope this part of the lab was clear. Now in the next lab we will see the interfacing of the PSOC with a character LCD. I hope this lab was clear. Thanks guys.